Hey, Barrett Edelstein here, your celeb expert and your celeb savant. Celeb Savant is a weekly entertainment show. We have long-form career retrospective type interviews with celebrities, singers, actors, and industry experts. Where were you on the 15th of April 2019, when Notre Dame was burning? Well, in this episode of Celeb Savant, we'll be going to the movies, and we'll be focusing on Notre Dame on Fire. It's a 2022 disaster film based on the Notre Dame de Paris fire that occurred on the 15th of April 2019. The film is directed by Jean-Jean Arnaud and from a script written by Arnaud and Thomas Bagain. In this episode, we will be interviewing and speaking to Jean-Jacques Arnaud. He's a French film director, screenwriter and producer, best known for directing Quest for Fire, The Name of the Rose, The Bear, The Lover, Seven Years in Tibet, Enemy at the Gates, a Black Gold, and Wolf Totem. Anon has received numerous awards for his work, including five Caesar Awards, one David D. Donalitella Award, and one National Academy of Cinema Award. Anon's first film, Black and White in Color, received an Academy Award for Best Foreign Language Film. Up next on Celeb Savant, we have got Jean-Jacques Anon. So this is a Slaves Front at Barrett Edelstein, and today we have the pleasure of speaking to Mr. Jean-Jacques, JJ Arnaud from France. Jean-Jacques, how are you today? What's happening in your life? And tell me, why are you in South Africa? Well, um, I'm in South Africa first because I love South Africa. Oh. I came here very often. Oh, good. Um, and I have a new movie called Notre Dame on Fire. Uh, that is, uh, uh, although it could be understood as a very dramatic uh, project of fire and uh, firefighters, it's um, it's a sort of thriller uh, based on true events, you know, and on true events of the rescue. Um, but uh, strangely enough, um, there is also a bit of humor in that. Uh, it, it's, uh, uh, should I say, a, a very interesting complex cake. You know, uh, with uh, well, good emotion. I'm, I'm I'm quite pleased with that movie. It's uh, the last one I've done after a large number. And it is very a complex cake, as you called it. <laughs> <laughs> so many intricacies, so many scenes. I've seen the movie. It's brilliantly directed, brilliantly uh, filmed, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, what appealed to you to create this movie? Well, you know, I. Um, I've known this cathedral since childhood because I was a, a kid living in a suburb and uh, every week we were coming to Paris and we were stopping at the railway station. The steps were giving rust in front of uh, Notre Dame. And my parents and I are not believers, but they, they would love to go inside the cathedral because it was so beautiful, so big and... You know, I was just uh, five years old or something like that, and I loved the smell of uh, the incense and uh, the sound of the organ and the beauty of uh, uh, the colored windows. Um, and uh, this cathedral inspired me when I was, uh, even when I was at film school, to carry on with studies of uh, medieval art and uh, me medieval architecture. And, uh, and of course, when, uh, when I... So not so heard of the uh, drama with this uh, big fire. Um, when I heard the un unfolding of the events, um, I remember being in that small house where there was no TV, and because of the the way the drama uh, was told, even on on the radio, I felt it was a great screenplay. Uh, to a point that I said to, to my wife, "Do you re realize how many film directors are going to rush to make this?" Uh, a movie about that fire. As a matter of fact, there were not so many people. Uh, they were interested in documentaries and not very much into getting into the heart of the, of the suspense. And when I started reading um, articles, I b first believe that those journalists were uh, screenplay writers from Hollywood. That they're not. They were, it was impossible. It was too good to be true. 
As a matter of fact, they were even far from reality. You know, it's, 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 as you have seen it, it's a pile of dysfunctioning. It's a, it's a total chaos everywhere. And it says a lot about our civilization, by the way, you know. Uh, nobody believed that Notre Dame could burn because it's been there for 800 years and uh, therefore nobody really paid attention of the danger. And as you have seen, the, uh, there's an accumulation of mistakes, uh, incredible mistakes, but it's so bizarre that I have to explain that all those elements are true. You know, I, I personally love true stories, you yes, know. Yeah. But here, it was, it, it was not credible in a way. And I would not have dared inventing those events if they had not been true. For, for instance, you know, the, the, the very beginning of the drama, uh, the, the guy who is in charge of the, the security, ne never seen a cathedral, it's his first day, he does everything that he had to do, the poor guy, but, uh, you know, the curiosity is uh, the fire brigade uh, was aware of the fire half an hour after the beginning of the fire, by a f tourist, a friend who was calling them from Firenze, from Italy. I mean, does it make sense? It does not, but it's the truth. Uh, and and another, another point that for me was very interesting is, you know, today you always have to make movies with female heroes, yeah. and they have to be beautiful and they have to do everything good. Here in the first truck that went to rescue the cathedral, here were two women, beautiful. I would not have dared writing that because it sounds like uh, somewhere you, so, something you want to please the studio executives, yes. you know, saying you have two beautiful girls in, in, in that truck. Well, it was the truth. One of, one of, of the two never, never went to, to, to a fire. Yeah. And one of the kids that was with them, there were four, you know, was like 19 years old. It was also his first fire. So... And, and I'm just giving you two, three examples of uh, something that sounds totally impossible and was strictly true. And, uh, and therefore, you know, it, it was very exciting for me because I had the luck not to need firemen in my life. And for me, firemen were nice people coming, uh, banging my door, to sell a calendar for Christmas. <laughs> yes. uh, I could see in their eyes that they were honest people and they were great, but now I have interviewed 168 uh, people, among them uh, about 100 of those real firemen that went to rescue the cathedral. And I must say, I, I, I am in awe. They, they, I, am, I have great admiration because everywhere in the world, the firemen of a, dif a different species. Before, we believed that they were priests who were devoting their life for the good of others. Well, as a matter of fact, those people exist, but they're not priests anymore. They, they don't wear a black robe, they wear a, a red costume, yeah. a red uniform. And, uh, you know, they all explain to me everywhere in the world, they say, well, you know, it's a vocation, we decided not to earn a lot of money, but when we go, ba go back home, we know that we've, we've doing something good during our lives. Our day, and that's so different from the crowd in Hollywood, where people know they make bad movies, and but earn a lot of money, mm. but run to the to the analyst. So that's a big difference. And I fell in love. Uh, don't get me wrong; I have lots of good friends in Los Angeles, but uh, the, I really fell in love with uh, the, the, the people who are firemen, and a lot of them are very young people, and they they have decided to earn little, but to make something of value, yeah. something that makes them comfortable at home when they come back. And they're so humble, they never say, oh, today I saved a baby that fell in the, in the river, uh, I risked my life. No, they say nothing, but yeah. they, they know inside. That's yes. It. So you mentioned that you listened on the radio when it was happening, rolling out in 2019. Where exactly were you? I, well, you know, I, I was in a, in a little house that I gave to my daughter, uh, this little house had been built by my parents uh, for me when I was a kid. Uh, and the t TV didn't work. And I just arrived, uh, so I, I listened to the drama on, on the radio. And uh, the reason I was uh, turning the radio on 
was there was a, you know in France we we have a revolutionary tradition. Uh, we strike a lot and also we uh, go in the street and yell. Uh, Sounds like South Africa. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but you have good reasons to do it. <laughs> uh, while in, in France it's all tradition. And here uh, we were in the middle of a crisis called Ye- Yellow Vest. Uh, it oh, was, I remember that, yes. You know, it, it was quite vicious. And uh, people were burning banks and things and cars and all that. Uh, so um, our president, Macron, had to give a speech, and I was waiting for that speech because I wanted to know what were the main decisions. And suddenly I'm hearing there's smoke uh, out of Notre Dame, and then there's a big fire, and then the unfolding, as I was saying, was so captivating that I immediately realized it was like uh, l- like written like a screenplay. Yes. You know, with all the... Uh, and, and also another element... Uh, that made me think about screenplay is, you know, on a basic Hollywood screenplay, you have to have a star, Mm -hmm. you have to have a good villain, and you have to have good people who try to help the star. Mm -hmm. Here, the star is Notre Dame. It's the most beautiful woman we had for the 800 (laughs) past years. Uh, It's an international star. It's a monument that is the most visited in the world. We have a villain was the perfect villain, fire. Yeah. Charismatic, photogenic, very pleasant. When hot. It's, it's hot. It's hot and it's good. <laughs> but also when it's become becoming too hot, you're destroyed in a few minutes, yeah. a few seconds. So it's the perfect villain. You know, you, it, it, it's like a, in a movie, if you have a good-looking villain, for instance, yeah. it's a better villain than the guy who looks villain. Yeah. And then you have the good doctors and they cannot have access because it's Paris. And in Paris, you know, it's uh, way worse than in Johannesburg. Uh, you have uh, tra- traffic jam. It was six o'clock, so that's precisely the moment where people go out of the office. And also, because there was this huge fire, people wanted to come and see it. And the French mentality is, you know, liberté, égalité, fraternité. It means freedom. Uh, freedom is uh, in the mind of French. Uh, you have the freedom to do anything you want. Therefore, if you want to stop the traffic because you want to take a selfie of yourself from oh, a cathedral, wow. yeah. you stop the traffic. You have the liberté uh, to yes. do it. You know. So that, that meant that uh, not only the firemen learned way too late what was happening, but they just couldn't come. Uh, and also, you know, we have uh, narrow streets because it's a, th- that uh, district is a medieval district. Uh, I, I live nearby, so I can tell you, the older streets are very, very narrow you yeah. know, and winding. Heard this beautiful, in inverted commas, screenplay playing out. You decided to then create all this masterpiece of a movie. What was the process of day one writing the script to the completed? How long did that whole process take you? Well, it took me way sh- shorter than before because it was a confinement. So I was trapped in my country place. I had no premiere, no nothing. <laughs> and and I spent from 9 o'clock in the morning to uh, late at night uh, to write the screenplay. I had my first draft in two, two months. Usually a screenplay for me is a year and a half. Okay. And this one took me only six months. Uh I, the, the thing I had to do is wait for the end of the quarantine and th- th- meet a lot of people that I couldn't meet before. Yeah. Uh, so and I, each, uh, each meeting gave me uh, so much, such a better understanding of the reality, of the danger as well, you know, because it's why uh, th- there is a component of this movie that is a thriller uh, w- where you feel the danger uh, and therefore, I had to listen carefully to what happened. You know, I'm, I'm familiar with cathedral, of course. Uh, but if you realize that the fire was f- at the top of the cathedral, that means 400 steps, 400. And the people, the firemen, have four, four, uh, 50 kilos on their yeah. back. Wow. So it's, it's uh, all that in smoke... Uh, with doors that were closed. I mean, a sort of nightmare movie, you know, in a way. But with those charming young people who managed to rescue the cathedral. 
And there was also the treasures in the, the yeah. cathedral, cathedral, the the old uh, keepsakes and sure. all those type of the things. relics. You know, the relics. Yes. It's, uh, one of the relic was the most expensive object that we own in France, and uh, uh, most people in France didn't know that this relic was there. It's, it's the thorn crown of the Christ. Yes, that's right. Uh, or supposed to be, uh, but in any case. Um, you know, the French kingdom in the, the 12th century paid the price of one year of the French budget. Wow. It would be like trillion, a trillion dollar today. Just amazing. But, you know, those days it was yeah. uh, full Catholicism. And, and it put France, to, to buy this object, put France in trouble for 40 years. Even more, you know, it it, it started a sort of decline, and uh, that was in this cathedral, and that was, you know, if the cathedral had f collapsed, it could have been rebuilt, but if that object had disappeared, yeah, that's that's it, it's the end of it, you know. Yeah. So it's why uh, uh, you see that in the movie. There's a rescue operation uh, that was quite chaotic and uh, almost comical. Yeah, exactly, because there was only one person who sure. knew the keys. There were so many keys and where it is and where it's not. Right. So <laughs> we don't want, don't want to give too much away because we want people to go see it for themselves. Sure, sure. <laughs> That's why, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not saying too much. But yes. It was, even for me, you know, I had no idea uh, that it would be such a chaos. And it, the, 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 the way it's all organized, it's, uh, it goes back for many ages, you know, uh, uh, but you're right, I should not tell too much. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> now, where did you film a lot of the the intricate elements? Obviously not. Well, did you build up a set or sure, how? Sure, 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 sure. Okay. We, we, we built up many sets, uh, including sections of uh, staircases, because staircases are so narrow mm -hmm. that if you put the actors and their 50 kilos of equipment, you have no 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 where to put a camera. Yeah. So I had to uh, make a, uh, imitation of uh, of those staircases. But uh, I had very impressive uh, sets. You know, they were the you know the cathedral is uh, more than 150 meters long, and uh, some of my sets were 60, 70 meters long. It's it's, it's huge sets mm. that I put on fire. Because, uh, you know, of course I didn't get permission to put, uh, to put the cathedral on fire again. Yeah. Um, but what was also was very amusing uh, to me uh, is that I did shoot in the cathedral. I shot like 10% in the real cathedral. But most of the places I could not because there are scaffoldings everywhere or yes. it has been destroyed uh, or it's too dangerous. There's uh, lead everywhere and yeah. lead is very uh, dangerous. So I had to recreate all that or to find, should I say, body doubles. Yes. You know, it's a tradition in, in, in cinema. When your star mm. is at hospi in hospital, uh, you find, uh, for certain scenes, a double yeah. with the same hair. And the good thing about uh, Notre Dame is Notre Dame is the second Gothic cathedral in terms of when it has been built. The first, very first Gothic cathedral in the world is a little, from a little city that is 100 kilometers south of uh, Paris. And um, my country place is close by. So I know this very first cathedral, which uh, was imitated by Notre Dame, and they okay. use the same architects. So on certain angles, the high angles, meaning the camera being high and looking mm. down. I used uh, a lot of, I did a lot of shots in this cathedral. They have exactly the same uh, pattern on the ground. Oh, wow, okay. And uh, the columns are almost the same. And then I would bring my own columns, the, the imitation of uh, Notre Dame columns and pillars, and covering those pillars and uh, and columns in the Sans Cathedral. Now, for the shot from low angle, mm -hmm. camera low looking up yep. to the vaults, I picked a, cath a cathedral that is not the mother of Notre Dame, but the sister okay. of Notre Dame, which is uh, in Bourges. Beautiful, beautiful cathedral. 
um, where I had permission to uh, put some smoke. I even had uh, like a, uh, all the bottom I transformed in a swimming pool. I had the authorization. Oh, wow. Okay. So a lot of those scenes, uh, extremely similar to Notre Dame, uh, but were shot in uh, that other city. And everything that burns has been recreated on a soundstage. Uh, so we're talking huge, uh, uh, huge sets. Yeah. Uh, you know, just to, to give you, a, uh, we had 200 people working only on sets. Plus, wow. that or that, no, our, our uh, own production. But of course, we had uh, another 200 people working in different companies working for us. And I had a rather large unit, like 300 people uh, in the unit, because, you know, when, when you deal with smoke, fire, wind, it's very dangerous. Yeah. Uh, and uh, when, when you see melted lead and all that, also, you know, it's, it's burning. It's, uh, uh, it, it, those kind of movies can end up in a tragedy. Uh, I have a scene where I had 75 cubic meters of timbers and stones and, uh, all, and plaster and all that falling down in the middle of the cathedral. Uh, I shot it live, but uh, of course in a studio. Yeah. And uh, you know, to do a scene like that requires like renting the, st the space uh, three months in advance because you have to build everything, mm. but you also have to build the what's going to hold all that stuff that's going to fall. Yes, yeah. Uh, and also you have to check all the dangers, the possible dangers, and how do you, you manage, uh, you know, when you have 75 square meters, square, square uh, cubic meters in heavy flames, we're, we're talking flames that could be like 20 meters high. Uh, so after two minutes, there's no more oxygen in the set. You have to run. We're, dis we're like cosmonauts. Wow. And we had horns going, Aah! when the, uh, we had a little machine that to tell us uh, if there was still enough oxygen. And uh, it was, uh, as a matter of less than two minutes. So I had to make sure that from the moment I start, I asked to start the, to light all the equipment to the moment everybody evacuates the studio, it was less than two minutes. But I managed to do it. I, I shot that scene for instance, 17 cameras. Wow. Uh, 17 and cameras. 17, yeah. But, uh, you, you know, you have it, to, uh, in the old days, 17 cameras was almost impossible because they were huge cameras. Yes. When I did The Name of the Rose, for instance, I, I had a big fire. I had only seven cameras because they were 75 mm, uh, uh, 35 millimeter camera. Therefore, they were big. You need to, uh, to have a camera operator and all that. Now, you can, you can have all, all kind of smaller cameras. Yes. If you burn one, it's, it's, I should say, only $100. So it's, <laughs> it's, it's not the same thing. You burn a, a Panavision camera, yeah. a, a, I don't know, to, to, uh, me, almost a million, yeah, a million yeah. dollars, you know. Uh, so here uh, I, I used st standard big cameras, like I had 10 of those, but the, 17, the seven others were small cameras hidden uh, under the seat or among the burning stuff. And we created some uh, boxes, uh, ventilated, yes. um, that remained, some of them, for three days under the ashes. And, and the images survived because we had this system. Uh, it was like a, a very strong air conditioning uh, and the, the, the camera didn't melt. I had, I had melted a number of cameras in my life. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> but not this time. <laughs> Moving beyond not, uh, Notre Dame, what's next for Jean-Jacques? Well, next is going to be decided in a few days now. Okay. Uh, but I, I, I'll, I'll tell you why I, I, it lasted so long. You, you know, our, our business is going through a difficult moment. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, uh, since the pandemic, people stopped going to cinema because it was closed. Yeah, exactly. And then, in the meantime, they bought, uh, they invested in a large screen and a yeah. good sound system. Yeah. And because cinemas were closed, there was no film being made. Mm -hmm. And when the cinema reopened, there was nothing really appealing to go. And people were used to look at, uh, you know, the platforms. And 
you know, my real, my, my life has been a life of big screens. Yes. Uh, I did the first IMAX uh, 3D movie uh, with actors and all that. So, so that's something I love mastering. But um, uh, as you know, I need big budgets to make those movies. Uh, I want to make sure that the situation is such that we can uh, afford to make the films of my dream. Yes. Uh, uh, and, well, I normally would have an answer uh, before the end of the month. Okay, lovely. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put you on the spot now. Right, I okay. I, I love playing this game. Or are there any specific actors, actresses that you have yet to work with that you'd like to collaborate with and direct and produce um, movies with? No. No? Okay. The reason is... Um, when I write, I never write for an actor. Okay. Why? Because if I write for an actor, I will write with a preconception yes. of what this actor is. And if this actor has been a perfect policeman, am I going to write another policeman story for this actor? Okay. No. It would be much better that he's a, a vagabond somewhere in Nepal. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> because then he would be excited. Yeah. And then... When I'm finished writing, I'm saying, okay, who could be playing this? And now uh, I'm not so much actor dependent. Okay. And therefore, uh, you know, I love working with famous actors. Uh, I love even more to working with great talent. But sometimes uh, famous, very famous actors are also great talents. Yes. But they're also great talents that are perfectly unknown or beginners. And I love it as much. You know, when I did a movie like The Lover years ago, called L'Amant in French, it was a story of an innocent young girl in Vietnam uh, falling in love with a uh, Chinese uh, aristocrat guy. Uh, I couldn't find the actors. And I was ready not to do the movie. But the miracle happened. I saw one girl. She had never done even a, a, a video. Yeah. Never been on set before, and she was great, and I hired her, and uh, the, the movie did extraordinarily well. And same thing for the, the Chinese man. You know, it's very difficult to find in those days uh, some some uh, actors with a lot of dignity yeah. being Chinese because in those days, English-speaking actors who were from uh, Asian origin were always offered to be taxi drivers uh, yeah. or, or dr uh, dr drug dealers, you know. Yes. And they had to do uh, yeah. Kung Fu. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and I yeah, could yeah. see those, those, those guys, uh, they, they were intellectually very elegant. Mm. I said, why, why do you have all those muscles? I said, well, listen, uh, if not, I have no job. Yeah. The stereotype of the Stereotype of, of, of the, the Asian in the, yeah. uh, in the old days, yes. So, so, so you know, I... One of the pleasures of my life is to direct actors. I like to immerse myself in their soul, in a way, you know, because I, if I direct a young girl, I have to think that I, I could be, could have been a young girl. Yeah. Uh, if I direct a monk, like in Name of the Rose, I've never been a monk, but I have to, you know, a movie that uh, is still very much seen uh, called The Bear, where, you know, the main character is, is, is a bear. Am I a bear? A portion of myself, yes. And uh, am I a baby bear? Well, I, 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 I can identify. <laughs> 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 the podcast is listened to throughout the world, US, UK, South Africa. As a final message to our listening audience, what would you like to say? To enjoy themselves. Yes. Uh, and I also hope that uh, cinema will be able to provide films that uh, will allow them to escape for two hours in another world that will uh, leave their heart full of hope. Brilliant. I love that. So dropping the mic on that, this is Celeb Savant signing out with Jean-Jacques Arnaud. Thank you very much. Thank you. 